Hello and welcome to a new Blender developer sneak peek. My name is Thomas Beck and I present you in this episode many improvements in the node editor, rendering, painting and sculpting section. All of those found its way into the soon to be released Blender version 2.75 and if you'd like to support me and make sure that more videos are created more frequently, then use the Amazon link in the video description to buy my German Blender book or buy other stuff from Amazon with the link. But now I wish you a lot of joy with the following sneak peek. So let's look at nodes and renderings. First of all, we've got the new uh, snapping tool in the node editor. So let's just uh, increase the size of it and then enable snapping. And then you can see that all the nodes are snapping to the grid. So that's perfect if you'd like to have your node tree organized a bit more. And there you can see that it's not only the grid snapping available, but also the node X, node Y, and node X and Y. And what that does is, for example, when you have a node, new node and you'd like to um, align them, then just use the snapping tool. And there, as in the 3D view, are the active median center and closest median for example is um, looking at the mouse pointer and then do does a media median align the other are likewise so that is the align feature and you're enabling it by uh, shift tap like in the 3d view and uh, previously, previously you were leaving node groups by a shift tab. So when you had a node group like this one, for example, control G to create a node group. And then you had another node group, for example, uh, this one that goes even down, further down the tree then you would have left this uh, group by hitting shift and tap. But now as you enable with shift and tap the um, snapping tool, now you're leaving it with uh, control and tap. So one group uh, up the tree is control tap and tap is one group down the tree. So that's it for the um, snapping tool. And now we are looking at light portals. So let's just open up a file that I prepared already. And there you can see that um, this is a very simple scene with Suzanne and a closed mesh, like you see here, there is no open space here. But there are some holes in it and the left side on the top uh, part of the mesh and on the right side. And this is extremely, um, extremely hard for cycles to trace because uh, that is a bit theor theoretical, but that is important to understand when cycles is um, evaluating the scene, then it's shooting rays from the camera in into this room and they are bouncing off the walls and of the um, the objects that are in the room. And sometimes they accidentally hit a window and then they say, okay, that is a bounce that is uh, coming from the environment. So when you are lighting with the environment and you have very small holes in your mesh only to light this uh, scene, then it's very hard for cycles to um, know where these holes are in your mesh. So that is happening accidentally and that is very noisy um, when you are rendering it. So let us just test how this looks when you are uh, using this scene only with in with an experiment an environment texture uh, texture and those holes as the only light source and this one is now uh, using i think 150 no 200 samples and as you can see we have quite a bit of noise there and now there is a new option in uh, cycles and that is to guide cycles 
um, to those holes. And you can do that by simply adding uh, an uh, area light via lamp and then area. And this area lamp now, this one, um, has a new option and this option is uh, called portal. And what this does is it says this is an area where cycles should look at uh, very specifically for the environment texture. And I prepared this scene already with some portals. So I used a portal on the left, on the right, as you can see here, and on the top. And those portals should, um, you, maybe you have uh, guessed it already fr from my explanation, they should cover the complete hole. Every hole that is in this mesh should be covered completely. And then we're rendering again. Oh, sorry, this was not meant to be uh, to override the um, the last render again. So let us just render it again. This one is the one without the uh, portals. So we could compare them, them together. That's the one without the portals. And then we have those with the portals. J and render again. And you see almost immediately that this noise is much less than in the previous render. And when we are switching back and forth between those two, then you'll see for sure that this one is the no portals and this one is the portals thing, that this is much more noisy than this one and the light is much more, uh, much more evenly distributed in the um, render with the portals. So that is a uh, really important thing. But the other thing is that you should always try to cover this hole, those holes completely. And as you can see here, those portals are flying above the holes. So let us just um, prepare the third slot and then select all portals and scale them uh, and grab them a bit inwards like so and do another render a third and last one and then you see it's a bit subtle i uh, i assume but i'm sure you can see that those uh, lighting situ situations are really meant for portals and improve even more if you um, place them completely over the holes so let us just switch. This one is the no portal renderer. That one is the portals uh, where the portals are outside of the holes. And this one is where the portals are inside the holes. So exactly in the middle of the holes. And when we switch back and forth between outside and inside, then you see that there's even more light finding its way into this box. So this portal, the, those portals are um, especially important for those lighting situations. They won't be much better in uh, some outdoor scenes or something like that. It's always useful when you are when you have got scenes that are um, th that are cut out with small holes and cycles tries to um, to find the environment texture, the vi environment uh, lighting through these holes. So that uh, that are the portal portals. Apart from that, there is now an animated seat button, like you can see here. And I don't know if you if you knew that already, but there was a, so to say a trick uh, by inserting a frame in this field, because when you now switch uh, the current the uh, current uh, frame. Then you can see, or at least you should see it when you are writing it correctly. Uh, then you can hopefully now see that the seed value is changing uh, appropriately 
if you're switching the current frame like you can see here and this one was very hidden so now there is a UI button for this when you click on this then cycles is uh, using uh, a new seed value for every frame that is changing so you have no static noise in your renderers, renderer but a dynamic noise pattern so that was the um, the animated scene uh, uh, the an animated uh, seed feature and there is another one in the um, in the scene tab here and that is the simplify feature simplify is meant f to uh, simplify all your items that you have in your scene at once so when you have many items with subsurface um, sub subdivision surface modifiers on it and you'd like to um, make your scene drawing a bit faster then you could say I'd like to have the max subdivision uh, lowered to three and all your, um, your objects that have those modif modifier on it will automatically use this modifier only in subdivision level three but previously there was only one slider with subdivision there were, were no distinction bef between viewport and render and so when you had your subdivision level down to three then there was the um, the problem that when you rendered your scene the subdivision was still on, th on three and not uh, back to your normal uh, subdivision level and now they were split up so you have one render subdivision level that you can uh, use to simplify your render globally and your viewport subdivision level that is very convenient when you got big production scenes and so it's much appreciated thanks for that um, then there is now a left and right button as you, as you can see here to switch between your passes now we only have one pass so there won't be much switching visible here but uh, if you got many passes then uh, click on this bu those buttons will switch between this the those available path passes and last but not least uh, a nice feature for all the uh, cycle uh, the cycles and amd guys that are out there cycles is now uh, capable of rendering with your amd gpu so those are the features that are working at, uh, at the moment um, as you can see here the basic shading is working the motion blur is working on uh, AMD CPUs hair is working but there is no uh, volume s support no smoke no fire all those are not supported but there is the display displacement and subdivision supported in the experimental features set so there w will be much uh, added much more uh, later but that's all for after the release this one is all you can do now but test it please because we need your um, reports if everything is working as intended and that was everything for nodes and rendering so let's now look at the painting and sculpting improvements and there is a very cool feature at first in the texture paint and that is the symmetry support so let's go to tools and to symmetry and enable it right away and then draw a bit and then you see that there is a symmetry drawing now finally available so all kinds of ornaments and flowers and much other stuff is now easy so you can um, enable it right here in the symmetry for x y and z and um, another thing is the line drawing so let's just undo all my drawing stuff and then um, switch to line uh, on the stroke line and when you track uh, hold and drag the um, le left mouse button then you are uh, drawing a line but now it's possible to draw with the secondary color too by just using 
the control uh, key. So hold on the control key, drag and let it go. And there is the second color. And apart from that, it's now possible to constrain your axes by holding Alt. And that is done by just uh, initial, initialize the uh, line drawing as usual, then hold on Alt. And as you can see, it's um, constraining it to 45 de degrees and then let it go and it's drawing. So that is everything for the uh, painting support. There were some cool bug fixes, but uh, that's up to you. Just look it over at the, um, look it up over at the uh, release notes. And now we are switching back to the sculpt mode. And in sculpt mode, there is a new, let's just enable Dintopo by uh, hitting Control and D and then switch to the Dentopo tab. And there is now a new uh, detail setting and that is brush detail. And a brush detail is meaning that um, this radius, let's set it to 100 pixels so it's easier to calcul cal cal calculate. <laughs> and uh, this radius is now taken into account uh, for the uh, sculpting brush because this one, 25%, is now the uh, at maximum edge length. So when you have uh, 100 and 100 pixel, then the maximum edge edge length is 25 pixel at the moment. But when you are now decreasing your brush size by hitting F and then decreasing it, its size, then you see that you can detail everything because now the um, the maximum edge length isn't uh, a bit smaller. It's now, let's calculate it, I think five pixels or so, six pixel and uh, pixels, and there, uh, therefore it's much easier to detail all your sculpting strokes. And when you'd like to uh, detail it even more, then just decrease your brush and there you go. So that's an easy and helpful solution for not switching so much on your detail percentage there just use the brush size for that. And this concludes the developer sneak peek already. I hope that you had fun watching and learning new stuff and I hope to see you on my Google Plus, YouTube and Twitter page. Please share it to make the new features well known and now happy planning. Bye!